è successo che un paio di giorni fa mi sono dato una botta d'acqua. Ho cominciato a sanguinare. Dobbiamo capire meglio cosa sta succedendo. Ah. Tito, non è che ti abbiamo un po' troppe cane. Papà, se tutti a male voglio stare in ospedale con te. Ma vedi che non devi esagerare con le canne? Ci vuole un donatore. Come fanno a prenderlo? Con un mago. Oddio. Amore, com'è andata? Come deve andare? È un prelievo. Andiamo. Oh, sta a fare la coatta. Te assomigli tantissimo a uno che fa cinema. Non pensavo di essere così popolare. No, ma infatti non ti conoscevo. Ah, ecco. Questo film non lo vuole nessuno. Perché tu vuoi fare solo come cazzo ti pare a te? La commedia va bene, però non deve fare ridere. Ma che cazzo di commedia è se non fa ridere? È per la cosa della tua malattia. Ci sono rimasto malissimo. Lo vedo come non ti dai pace. Se io muoio, a lei che cosa cambia? Niente. Se muori sei uno stronzo. Stai tranquillo. C'ho paura. Ma io col cazzo che muoio. Uh, welcome everyone. Uh, my name is um, Adrian Wooden. I have the pleasure of, uh, of being the curator of the Cinema Made in Italy program, which is normally a showcase, a, a week-long showcase of the most exciting new uh, films coming out of Italy with the filmmakers uh, live and on stage uh, in London uh, during March. Well, obviously, circumstances have uh, prevented that from happening, but with the support of our terrific friends at um, Film Italia, uh, Cinecita Luce. Um, we have actually arranged a special partnership uh, with the online platform Movie, Mubi. And during April, nine new movies will be showcased and, and audiences in the UK will have an opportunity to see these fantastic new films that I've had the pleasure of um, selecting. And as part of that program, I'm even happier that Film Italia have arranged that you can meet virtually or you can hear me talk virtually uh, to the filmmakers responsible uh, for those films. And I'm really grateful to them um, for, uh, for making this possible. And I'm very grateful to Movie for doing it, for, for showcasing the films, and also the Italian Cultural Institute, which, whose platform, whose Vimeo channel we're on today, um, to, to actually have these conversations. So, um, and, and without any further ado, I'm really delighted uh, to welcome our special guest, uh, Francesco Bruni, the director and writer of Everything's Going to Be All Right, which is one of the, the great films that we're uh, showcasing in this program. Um, and as I say, I'm sorry you're, you're, you're not in London uh, with us in, in March, um, but we do, we are very proud to be presenting your film uh, via movie. And it's great to have the chance to, to chat to you today um, about the film. So, so welcome. <laughs> Thank you. You can imagine how frustrated I am not to be there. Anyway, the, well, let's not regret. Uh, no. I'm I'm happy to be here with you and honored to be to have been selected. I say it's a great pleasure and and I love the film. I you know uh, I was I say sad not to be able to present in the cinema. I hope we'll welcome you back to London in, in the future. But I am glad audiences in in the UK will get a chance to see um, your your terrific movie. And that, I mean let's let's go back. I mean you're a you're a rise director. Um, this is your first new movie for a while, and I just wondered. In terms of the genesis, you know, this is about, I mean, I, I don't know whether you'd like me to say what it's about, or whether you'd like to say what it's about, but but it's, I think it's a very warm, human, um, funny uh, film, but with a with a serious edge, and about a filmmaker, a filmmaker's taken ill, and, and then the kind of trials and tribulations of him with his family and his friends, um, as to how he kind of gets through this period in his life, and, and I, I'm, am I right in saying that the genesis was that you yourself was taken ill and, and that was the sort of original wellspring for the story? Yes, I like in all the other films I've directed, there are four, uh, I always start from something uh, personal uh, and then transform it uh, in, in, in a way. 
and um, fictionalize it. And um, this particular film comes from an unlucky uh, medical experience I had uh, from 2017 to 2018 through 2018, which was a, a sort of leukemia. It's called myelodysplasia. Yeah. It is a tumor, it, it is a cancer of the blood. And, uh, and so I started from that uh, experience, but I decided to make a film of it uh, only when I realized that I had to get some distance from, from myself and from my, ex my personal experience. So I had to invent uh, something dr dramatically. And, uh, but of course, there is a lot of truth uh, to it, especially... Uh, the, the medical part, the diagnosis, and the hospitalization, uh, and everything. But then something invented uh, comes in. Did you, did you more or less start thinking about? I mean, were you thinking about this as a film even when you were ill, or was it was it afterwards that you started thinking maybe I could transform this tough experience in, into something into something else? No, when I was ill, I was basically thinking about surviving uh, and I was not very sure about that. So, no, it was only months after afterwards when I started thinking back on, on, on the experience. And then I, I started adding uh, some inv invention to it. And particularly in the second part of the film, I'm not going to say anything because I don't want to spoil vision. And, uh, and then when I decided that uh, there, there would be some important flashbacks and uh, dreams and hallucinations that could make the film more, uh, more rich and, and, and more interesting, then I realized that I had enough uh, ingredients to cook something. <laughs> And, and I think that's, I mean, there's lots of th things about the film I, I, I like, but but that that was the, the thing I was wondering about, that obviously you, you did take, and, the, and there's, a, there's a real air of authenticity about the, the medical scenes for obvious reasons. And, and um, But the thing I love about the film is that whilst it, it has a man who is in fear of his life, is he going to get through this, this process, is that you've injected it with such additional kind of rich cinematic texture but also fantastic kind of humor um and and i just wondered in terms of you know the, was it how difficult was it to strike that balance but between writing something that that had a vein of you know authenticity of reality of you know this this is this is terrible what's happening to this guy but on the other hand there's an awful lot of, of fun in it. I mean, you know, for, for the audience that hasn't seen it, um, you know, the, the, there's a lot of really funny scenes. I mean, there's a, actually, there's a hysterical scene in, in, the, <laughs> in, in the hospital when the director is introducing his own movie and, and, and one of the audience members doesn't survive the end of the movie. <laughs> that didn't happen. I'm glad that you underlined uh, the funny, the funny side of of, of, of the film. I'm, ver I'm very glad about this because some Italian uh, moviegoers are afraid that th this film can be angosciante. I don't know. I, 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 you say it in English, but scary. This particular recipe, uh, <laughs> talking about uh, cooking again, uh, <laughs> is something that is. Uh, natural uh, to me but not only to me all, also in the films that i wrote for paolo virzi we always uh, try to find the humoristic side of uh, dramatic ev events you know and it is not difficult it is natural if you think about the one scene of the film i can tell about this because it's very early in the movie how uh, bruno salvati discovers that he's uh, he has an, an illness he's watching a very beautiful woman cross the streets in front of him and he slams the door of of his car in in his nose and and that is funny <laughs> But uh, two, three seconds later, we realized that uh, the hemor hemorrhage, hemorrhage is not yeah. hem hemorrhage is not stopping. So there is something uh, dramatic about. It. So the two things mingle together. Also in the scene that you that you anticipated, but I'm not going to talk about it. Only to say that it is an invented scene because when I was uh, in the hospital in Gemelli, uh, I I 
realized that there was a cinema in that in the hospital, a very beautiful cinema, Medi cinema. And then I was wondering while I was uh, totally out of my mind for uh, for for the cures uh, that if I could present my my previous film Tutto quello che vuoi in that in that con but of of course I didn't even dare to ask no but then i i i i did it uh, in fiction yes <laughs> and it, and it works beautifully but um and, and in terms of the um the, the there's a great kind of you know representation of family a, a dysfunctional family like all families are dysfunctional in, in, in the film and i i wondered how much how much um, distance you had to get from your own family circumstances to to create that family because it is very it is very believable the, the the director's relationship with his father the the and and his you know his problems with his his wife and his his children and 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 the thing that I again I really like about the film is that you have represented that family what we would say in England as warts and all you know that they are they they get irritated with each other they're falling out they're arguing he's 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 quite a pain, the director himself. And, um, <laughs> yes, he's a pain. <laughs> but they they do, you do manage to convey the fact that they love each other. And, and that's, I think, uh, one of the, again, one of the great gifts of the film is that you, you, this is believable because they're not black and white. You've managed to create that, um, that gray area where families fall in and out of love with each other every every minute of the day i guess in that way <laughs> uh, uh, it doesn't have much to do with my family because i'm still married while bruno salvati is separated <laughs> but i can be thrown out of my house any any day uh, <laughs> then i have an older son who is also a very famous uh, trap uh, trapper and uh, and and a younger daughter who resembles He's, she's the one who resembles the most the character of Adele in, in, in the film. She's very responsible, she's very caring, she's very mature. So, uh, but, but then everything else uh, is different because uh, Bruno Salvati is a very unlucky uh, cinema director. I'm not uh, top of the list, but I'm not uh, you, you... The, the, the last one. <laughs> of the Italian cinema as, as he is. But I was, I'm, I'm very happy that I could portray a, a character of a director like him because 95% of my colleagues and friends that I know uh, have, uh, have that kind of problems, frustration uh, and uh, being um, set aside by, by the industry and trying to do a personal cinema that uh, doesn't uh, meet uh, commercial um, uh, re requests and so being uh, uh, forgotten basically so i i'm very glad that i that i made this uh, that i portrayed this character well, and, and again, not particularly giving things away from some people may have seen the film by the time into the channel, some won't. But there's also in in that vein that there are there's a particularly great scene um, which, which uh, had real force, is very funny and and very believable about you know when the director not being particularly happy with his producer. <laughs> 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 And and has the most extraordinary kind of rant where <laughs> and, and some of this resonates, you know, where he basically accuses him of taking public money and not doing anything with it, and you know, and and not wanting to, to you know, where's more, you know, where's my casting director? Where's my where's my everything? And it's 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 a wonderful moment of kind of explosion of all the frustrations i imagine that, that you must have experienced a little bit of this and other yes. friends and colleagues of yours have experienced it no no i have it. but that's we call it togliersi i sassolini dalle scarpe which means taking pe uh, pebbles out of one's shoes right it is something that i have experienced frustration uh, and uh, difficulty in making myself uh, accepted and understood by by the by, by the industry basically because uh, I'm, i i do a sort of comedy which is not 
exactly what uh, the producers and the dis distributors uh, expect uh, from from a comedy something light funny with uh, people not having a real dramatic problems and then i also basically choose the actors which are right for the for the film but which who are not uh very welcome by 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 the distributors because they don't bring money right away by by their name except in this case because uh, kim is a, is a great actor and he's uh, commercially valuable but and so i i was able to have uh, both things, artistic uh, quality and commercial value. Well, that was what I was going to ask you about your relationship um, with him, because as you say, he's a, he's a terrific actor. He's also directed himself and, and uh, you know, a, 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 a significant figure in, in contemporary um, Italian movies. In terms of your relationship with him, um, what was this? A, was this simply a kind of question of saying, you know, I've written this script or 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 did you did you always think about him for that role or or was it a more a more of a complicated process oh he was my first choice because i wanted to appear more beautiful than than i really am <laughs> and so i chose the most beautiful actor in italian cinema <laughs> and uh, i sent him the script he called me right away the same day and he said i want to do it and uh, so this was very important for me for for the film also financially yeah and uh then he also gave a great contribution to the screen to the screenwriting the screenplay because we 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 sat together for like two entire days uh reviewing the script and the cutting and adding and uh but what convinced me was that he he didn't want to appear more than I had written. He wanted to appear, he wanted to appear less. Ah. He said, "I'm talking too much. Give this line to other actors. Cut this scene." I, uh, and so I understood that it was uh, in the interest of the film. And in the end, I decided that he would uh, uh, sign the, the screenplay uh, with me. He is in the end titled as a collaborator to the screenplay but i think he would he would have deserved even more oh that's i mean that's very interesting then so so that what that's a very i mean obviously because of that, that that's a very very close uh collaboration then in in this yes. context and and in terms of how how you work from from developing the screenplay into into shooting the movie and, and I, well before we talk about that in terms of the casting obviously you also cast someone very close to you as as the doctor of the director in the, <laughs> in, 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 in the film yes. and, uh, uh, and and was that something you'd all, always intended to to have your your wife be a major character in the film um as as the voice of reason against his sort of hysteric <laughs> <laughs> my wife uh, as is, is the only actor actress who's been in all my films yeah. but not because i'm um, also because i'm afraid of her so uh but also because i want her by my side when when i shoot and i have and I'm, i've always given her parts of sort of a fairy tale creature uh, a fairy you know una fata, una, yes. who hel who helps people in in uh, in distress in this case she had witnessed my hospitalization she has spoken to the doctor she knew about what ha had happened to me more clearly than i than i did and so i decided to turn this character who in real life was a man uh -huh. uh, in, in, into a woman and, and what happened was that with, with this simple shift, I had uh, Kim Rossi Stewart surrounded by four strong female character who basically balance uh, the, the the situation be between man and, and, and woman, even or or even overcome him in, in a way because they're all better than him, than him. They're more patient. They're more mature. They're more uh co competent they're more intelligent they're more uh, uh su they're sweeter you know so uh, i'm very glad about this choice uh, and about my actresses which i i want to mention yes. who i want to mention lorenza indovina who plays the wife putini peruso who plays uh, the daughter and barbara ronchi who plays a character i'm not going to talk about because it's 
a surprise. Although that character, which I won't elaborate on, I have to say that's what I think that's one of the who is a character who appears later on in the film and yes. has a dramatic impact in the film. Um, I thought that was was extraordinarily well done. The way in which the movie, without without blowing the plot, yes, has a change in tone at that point and yes. and gains a real kind of edge and hardness and and the comedy stops and it's you know and it's quite sharp and and I actually she adds a a dimension with the the, the, the dialogue she's I mean she's not in the movie for a long time it, it's not a big part but she has a big impact and and has a kind of what we would say verisimilitude you know she really adds an extra layer to the film I think at a certain point there is a need uh, for 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 a trip for a un viaggio to, to Livorno, yeah. which is the, the, the place I come from and which is my, I consider it my own town, even if I was not born there. And uh, this ad, this gives the, the film a shift of, of gear. Suddenly you see open, open air place, places and another, another city, the sea. And so, I, yeah. yes, yes. Even though we were very unlucky with the weather, but I think that adds a, a bit of fascina fascination too. It looks like an, an English uh, sea town uh, <laughs> in, in a way. There's always clouds or, or, and rain <laughs> and, and everything. So I think that gives um, the film a boost in, 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 in the second part. Also because of the entrance of Barbara Ronchi, who is a great, great actress you will hear about her if you haven't heard about her yet but she she will become soon one of the most important actresses in italy and, and i think that's again one of the things i really like about the film because you managed to keep that even though you know we talked about the the comedic you know the fact that the the, the director is I think you succeed, and actually Kimmy Ross and Stewart succeeds with a brilliant performance that manages to make someone who, on the face of it, is incredibly irritating, as you've delivered, <laughs> incredibly irritating, and, and, and everyone says you're impossible, you know, <laughs> throughout the film, but you still care about him. You ultimately still have enough sympathy there to care about him. Because he's a loser. <laughs> yeah. No, really. Yeah. Uh, can you imagine a character like that? Like that? with a successful prize-winning director would be unbearable. <laughs> no, you're right. Then you would have no sympathy because his no. artistic genius or the arrogance of the artistic genius would completely finish you off in terms of his... Uh, <laughs> yes. But, but, um, but no, I, I, I agree. And I think that's, again, one of the, things, the, the nuances of the film that I think is very clever, uh, the, 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 why, why it works so well right to the to, to to you know to its conclusion um and i think that the other thing i was going to say is that and i know you didn't you didn't make the film in the context of a, a covid pandemic but but actually in a weird way what's happened since you made the film um and the fact that this film does in a sense deal with illness and does in a way deal with somebody struggling to to get their life back on track makes the film maybe accidentally, but makes the film even more resonant, it seems to me, in, in 2021, because, because of what we've all been living through. And, and yes. uh, it has an extra texture as a result of it. First of all, the title you are reading, uh, Everything is Gonna Be All Right, was the original Italian title, Andrà Tutto Bene, yes. which was changed in Cosa Sarà, because Andrà Tutto Bene was the log line of the first uh, of the first wave of the, of the pandemic oh, and so good. everybody was saying to me ah oh, you you guessed it right and i was thinking no i didn't because right. uh, i i don't want to people people to think that this is a film about covid i don't things are not going well no many people are dying many people are, lo are losing jobs so i decided to to, to change it. Uh, but unluckily, what really uh, pains me is that I think this film needs a physical audience. Uh, like all the, the kinds of film I love and I try to do, uh, the emotion, uh, the, the fun, the laughs, the, the tears, uh, uh, grow if you are together with other people. Oh, so I'm... I'm <laughs> I'm really a little frustrated about this, but I hope, I'm sure, 
that the film will come out in movie theaters or arenas. In, in, in Italy, we have a long uh, two month period of uh, open air cinema mm -hmm. and uh, it will find finally its uh, audience. And, I'm, and actually, I, I couldn't agree more because um, although um, we are where we are in terms of the way people, people can watch movies at the moment, I think that um, as I said, it, it because it actually looks um, it looks so beautiful. Um, you know, n n say Rome, but Livorno and and the, the, the different context, and even though the weather's not as great, it like, <laughs> actually adds an, an extra dimension to it. And it's definitely a film that I feel strongly um, should be seen in a, in a cinema because it has that. Um, it has a, it absolutely has a cinematic quality to it. Mm. Uh, and, and you can feel that you can, you know, you, you get that impression of dimension of space. Um, you've made it as a cinema movie. It's not, a, it, it does not come across as a movie for television, if you see what I mean. So, mm -hmm. so, so I, of course, I, fingers crossed. And actually the other thing I was going to say is that, that also I like, I very much like the, the use of music in the film and, and the selection. Mm -hmm. I mean, from the very beginning, you know, uh, near the beginning of the use of "Perfect Day" and and uh, and what's happening to to the, I, it's, I, you know, it, it's very. I think it's very cleverly judged. And I just wondered if you talk a little bit about how you use music in your in, in the film. The score was uh, written in, uh, by Rachev and Caratello, two two very good musicians. I always ask musicians to be very. Uh, shy and, and 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 low. I don't like music that uh, doubles the feeling uh, of a film, uh, emphasizes. Uh, yeah. Over so it, yeah. Uh, yes. So I uh, I think that they, they did a great they did a great job. You you the music contributes to the feelings, but without uh, making herself heard too much. And then I, I was very lucky because I, when I edited the, that scene at the beginning, we, we are not talking about, uh, <laughs> I put, I put uh, Perfect Day, which is one of the songs I love the most uh, in, in, in the whole pop music history. And uh, I put it on it, I put it on that scene. And when the producers saw this, the, the, the scene, he says, Okay, let's buy it because it's very expensive. Yeah, I imagine. Uh, really not is, <laughs> I'm always very envious when I see my colleagues, uh, you know, making films with four, five, six incredible tracks, and people think they have a good taste. They have money. That's that's the truth. So uh, I was able for the first time to, uh, to have a very important uh, track, and then there are two more. There is a lighthouse by yes. Patrick Watson and uh, uh, Altrove by Morgan, an Italian uh, uh, cantautore, singer, uh, musician, musician mm -hmm. in the end. So three very nice pieces. My last question to, to you really to, to, was going back to what we were talking about, the cinematic feel. I, we talked about the screenplay, we talked about the music, but but in terms of the, the cinematography, I'm just wondering about your relationship with with your cinematography, your DOP, and how how you tend to work together, because as I say the the film does look very cinematic. It looks um, it looks beautifully staged in all the locations that you've used. And I just wondered about you could tell us a little bit about how you shoot. This uh, uh, DOP is called Carlo Rinaldi. He's very young. He's done. He had done only two films before before mine. But I met him and we talked uh, about about the film, and he convinced me. Uh, about basically about one thing, which is the first time I, I I'm doing it, using one camera. Ah. Uh, I've I always shot with two or maybe even three, and uh, but this time I'm very glad I did this because shooting with ca one camera means setting the lights for that single point of view. And so having a, a dedicated light, which is not a diffused light, which, which you see in, in many movies, especially, especially in comedy. So I was afraid that I wouldn't, didn't have the time to do everything we had to do, but he reassured me and I'm very glad I, I listened to him. And I think that from now on, I will only use one camera, which also makes you think more about how you're going to shoot one scene you know makes you move the camera in, in order to have uh, 
uh, different points of view on this in in the same take instead of going with the usual yes i don't know campo contro campo how do you know you say it and so yeah 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 I, I, no i know exactly what you and mean. particularly in the dream and hallucination scenes uh, his contribution was very 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 important um i think that's you know what i was left with i was left with a, a feeling of a movie that that is that is about Italian cinema, but is about life and is about is about how you know someone's humanity shines through, even though they're you know they're beset with all these obstacles and they're a person that that they, <laughs> yes. uh, that other characters respond to. And and I and and in the end was something that I think that you've done so brilliantly is that you've made a really human, warm drama that is that is funny but also has a real depth and resonance to it and 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 what i would say in almost like in conclusion is is congratulations francesco i think it's a lovely lovely movie and Thank i'm you. so proud and pleased that we're showing it as part of of this year's festival i hope we get to show it in in, in a cinema and i hope you get to show it in lots more <laughs> 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 <'cause of> the... <laughs> thank you adrian i'm really glad i think you you got everything right about this uh, about this film. You you are you un you understood it uh, uh, deeply. So well, I'm glad about this because also f to me also foreign audiences are are important. You know, uh, maybe I find I find myself even better with some with some foreign sensibility than with the typical Italian comedy idea. Well, so, I, can, I can I can say that. Because I don't regard it as a typical Italian comedy, because I think it has no. the strength and depth, and and I absolutely know that that English audiences, that UK audiences will respond to the film because I found it, you know, very easy to respond to because I, it it spoke to me, and I know it will speak to our audiences. So I'm very Thank grateful you. that that you're part of uh, cinema made in Italy in in in, in London this year and. Uh, Congratulations again on the film and, and good luck with, you know, with, with the film and, and with future films. And I hope we, we get the opportunity to meet in person and, and show some other of your work. Thank you very much. I'm, I'm really curious to know how it will be received in, well, uh, in London. We'll give you some feedback from, from the audience. Grazie. As, as Grazie. Grazie.